Hi everyone. We're going to do a couple yin yoga poses. So take some time to carve out a little bit of space for yourself. Then you're going to come to start maybe in a child's pose. Get a little forward fold to begin to mildly start to open our back. So knees can be together, they can be far apart. It's up to what feels like your body needs today. And then the belly will come down in the direction of the legs. The head will maybe come down to the floor. If it doesn't, no worries. Stack some fists. Rest your head so that your upper body and shoulders can fully start to relax. Then you're going to spend some time just taking a couple breaths and noticing the body as it responds to being breathed. Feeling that with each breath you take, there's a sense of expansion that's happening in your body. In a child's pose, you're going to feel probably your back receiving the breath, opening and softening. You start to feel a sweet, mild stretching, releasing. Do a couple more, in and out, slow and steady. Good. Take about three more, just connecting into what's here for you today, what's present in your body, all the tightness that you meet with loving kindness. And what's up, tight hips, hey, cranky shoulder, you're here too. Then also taking some time just to notice the state of your emotions. It's all right to feel anxious and cranky and tired and overwhelmed. We get to slow down and start to make sense of those things in our yin practice. Two more big cycles of breath. Awesome. Take your time. Come all the way back up. Then you're going to sit on your tush and bring your legs out in front. We'll start with square pose. So legs will start wide, just letting things soften even here as we transition into the shape. Bend your left leg so that your shins kind of parallel-ish to maybe whatever wall in your house you're facing. Then you're going to take your right leg and stack it on top. You're going to listen to how things feel in kind of this top right hip the kind of deeper tug you're feeling in your butt, that's your piriformis. And we're going to start to open and strengthen and stretch and hydrate these parts of ourselves. So don't be concerned if one knee is flying way high up. That's just the way that your bone is built and the way that it fits into your hip socket. There's nothing wrong with you at all. You're perfect. So if you need anything underneath here, pillows work great, blankets, towels, just to let go of the extra bit of muscular engagement so we can get deeper into these connected tissues. If you're already feeling a lot of sensation, then you just stay upright, close your eyes, and this is your pose for today. If you need to kind of lean in to get that tug a little stronger, then lean in until you feel the sweet spot of sensation, kind of a sense of pressure a little bit maybe a pull, a tug, and then see if you can observe and watch the breath as you ease into maybe strong discomfort. If the head wants to round forward, you can allow it to do so. If there's any strain in the neck and it's uncomfortable, you can support your head with your hands. The goal is to find a position that feels the best for you, that makes the most sense for what is here for you today. Watch our breath as we sit in square. Allowing the strong sensations that you feel not to take you away from the present moment. Oftentimes we feel like we can't do it. We can't handle it. And so we give up all our power to that strong situation.
And our goal by inhabiting our body in this way in our yin yoga practice is to begin to take back our power. So with each breath, you're starting to take it back. You're starting to find yourself again in the midst of this whirlwind of sensation, emotions that bubble up, thoughts that pass by. Each breath is helping you regain yourself again. So keep breathing. You're doing great. time to time sensation that was once strong will subside because your body opened up and let you in deeper so there's a deeper space to explore and not resisting that deeper space sometimes it's normal to do that because it's a kind of unknown and that might frighten us a little bit we're looking to stay at peace so we can take back our power from all of those places of fear and doubt and uncertainty Take two more really full breaths in and out. And then go nice and slow. Come all the way back up. You can feel nice to lean back into the hands. You can open back up through your hip creases. You are compressed pretty strongly. Some of you might have even felt real extra strong compression of leg bones and hip crests pressing together. So you'll go slow, it's normal to feel like you're 80, your body's not used to being exercised in this way, these deeper layers, they get so neglected when we focus on our yang practice. And we need that sweet, juicy yang practice to make us strong, but we also need this yin because there are deep layers that want to be strong too. If you've got any need to move your legs around, to twist and turn in any way, do that stuff. And then we'll get the other side. You're gonna bend right leg. And now that shin's kind of just parallel to whatever you're facing in your home and your heel is away from your midline. And then stack your left leg over top. You might have a whole different side going on. You might have a different depth because even your own leg bones are different. Your own hip sockets, different right to left. And that's what makes you you, this blueprint that no one else has. So don't resist it. Instead, be empowered that nobody else has the bones that you do. Nobody else has the body that you do. So nobody else is going to need these poses in the way quite like you do. So you honor. If you're upright, you're upright. And that's perfect. Stay there and breathe. If you need to go in a little more to get the release for your sweet body and its unique blueprint, then lean in until you feel, you know it, we know it, we feel it, right? That nice tug, that bit of resistance in the body. And just honoring that, not pushing past that. We don't need to try to go for anything. We just need to yield to what's here. Learning the art of surrender is challenging because we're hardwired to go and attack and do. And so sometimes situations call for us to yield to them. And so we're opening up our ability to really take our life back, to be able to handle any and all sensation any and all situation, thought, emotion, with grace and ease and knowing when it's time to attack, when it's time to go after it, and when it's time to kind of step back and yield and surrender to. So keep observing your breath in and out.
keep breathing. Remembering the goal of our practice is to be passive in our body, to be soft, to go deeper past muscle. So see if you can keep breathing and just lovingly scan through your body, aware of anything that's gripping, and see if you can soften that just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much. But you'll feel this relaxing back. You'll feel this easing back into presence, to the aliveness that's in your body, to the courage and determination and perseverance that you have to make all these obstacles begin to diminish by taking back your power from the situations that have you feeling stuck. To take back your power from the people that have harmed you in the past. There's a strong sense of comfort and ease and okayness inside you. And our yin yoga practice helps to open us up to that space inside ourselves. To weather any storm. Keep breathing. Two more full breaths, just to come back to presence, to hearness. And then go slow, come up. Oh, nicely done. I know, it's intense. Take your time and open back up. These layers of our body, they're thick, they're dense, they're like plastic. And you know, plastic isn't always agreeable when you try to bend it, so it's normal and natural to feel that way. But then you start to notice when you release, there's this rush as we increase blood flow, circulation, fluid in the joints, and that starts to feel so good that those couple of minutes in agony sometimes are so worth it. So keep your legs wide. Naturally, that's probably where they landed. So we'll go for a pose called Dragonfly. We were intensely in outer hip, and now we're going to start to notice sensation is pulling strongly in inner hip and groin region. So you'll stay here, legs go as wide as it takes for you to feel that sweet bit of pull. If it's strong here, you might also feel it mildly going down through hamstrings and the backs and knees, totally normal. If you need a little bit more of that pull, see what happens when you walk forward, see if it pulls a little bit more in, in a way that is feeling like, yes, I'm releasing what needs to be released, not pulling in a way that's causing you kind of reaction to want to stop, but you know that sweet spot, just right, like, yes, this is what I need. And then you'll hang out here and take a couple deep breaths. The depth of your fold is not important. What you're feeling is important. And you could find just enough all the way upright. So find what makes sense. Let yourself soften, ungrip all the way, start in the toes. And with each breath, just move through your pieces and your parts. Am I soft in my ankles? Moving up the leg, what can I let go of in my calf muscle? Continuing to move it up, feeling softness through the backs of the knees, insides of the knees, tops of the knees. Continuing to feel all the way up through your legs. Can you feel a need to let go of something in the thighs? Feel that pressure get created when you let it go on the back side of the leg. Hamstrings maybe feel a nice extra bit of love and support. And as all of that relaxes, then there might be more depth to continue to open up and massage through the layers of fascia in your hips. Continuing to breathe and experience everything with a kind, loving, gentle awareness. This is how we learn to respond and not react. By feeling it from the inside out and treating it with tenderness. You kind of open up the capacity for mindfulness, for love, for presence and compassion. Oh, how we need compassion for our own selves. And we're learning to reclaim that here. A couple more deep breaths. 
maybe feeling like you're going in a little further, don't resist that. If your body's taking you there, go in there, get out some more of the tension. to remember that you are not the storyline of your life. You're not the things happening to you, the twists and turns in the story, the new characters that get introduced. You are none of that. You've lost sight of your role. And we're learning to take it back and reclaim it. You are the author of the story. And that's an important role that you need to take re-ownership on because at any point in time that you feel stuck, you have to remember that you can write a new chapter. You can. You re-inhabit your experiences from the inside out. You tune back into your heart. You feel that courage and that perseverance to take back ownership of being the author, writing the story. Slowly start to roll back up. Move the legs in the ways they need to with love and care. Yeah. Let's take some time and bend backwards. So eventually flip over onto your belly. We'll go for sphinx, propping up on your elbows so that you're feeling sensation in the back, like pressure probably, because you're pushing together the vertebrae and that squeezing on the discs to help to rehydrate them by wringing out. But some of you might need to go further down to find the right amount of pressure for you. So find a sweet spot. It can be lower down, kind of stacked. It can be even higher up if you want to take it up to seal by straightening your arms. And then just easing into the present moment, breathing and trying to inhabit yourself fully. Feel it from the inside out. a few more deep breaths. It's normal in the amazingly beautiful, fast pace of our life to feel like we're off track, and to maybe lose focus from time to time. Sometimes we even look at our life and we're somewhere we don't really want to be in relationships, in jobs, in life situations and circumstance. And it's in those moments that the power of this yin yoga practice really helps us because it's in those moments of being stuck, lost, that we can benefit from a pause. To take a deep breath and a step back and to kind of reevaluate our life, reconnect to the world and the people who matter most to us. Sometimes you look out onto the horizon of your life and it seems like your dreams are so far off. But at least knowing that they are out there, even if they seem so distant and so out of reach, they're there. They're just waiting for you to take back your life and start to move toward them.
strong sensation has subsided and you've been in sphinx maybe seeing if you gotta squeeze a little bit more out and coming up a little higher into seal might feel nice. So just move your hands out to the right and to the left, press into your hands and straighten your arms the rest of the way. If it got way too intense and you don't enjoy it, honor that instinct in your body and come back down. Let's see if you can take about five more deep breaths here, just bringing softness into your body, presence into your heart, your mind, your whole state of being. together. Get two more breaths and then lay down on your belly. And just pausing. If you have desires to move your legs, honor that. Move in any way. Child's pose might even really hit the spot to move the spine in the other direction just to neutralize it again. So go where you're called to. Enjoy about five breaths there. Taking your time. We're going to do one of my favorites, Broken Wing. So lie on your right side. I'm going to show you this from the back view so you can see what we're doing with our arm. So as you lie down, you're going to take your left arm and reach it up into the air. And just coming into a moment where you can appreciate the real beauty of all sides of yourself, yin and yang. Take a moment to actively reach towards the ceiling and notice what that feels like in your whole state of being. This kind of questing for and stretching and reaching. And then take a moment to surrender to your yin side, the yielding to, and just let go of all of that and feel your arm bone just kind of drop back down. Oh yeah. And kind of set back into the socket. And just enjoy that now there's this like free weightlessness there. And then when you feel ready, you're gonna spin your thumb so that it points towards your booty. Then you're gonna drop your arm behind your back palms facing away from you. If you've got strong sensation already in your left shoulder, you can stay there. If you need more, you walk it higher up. If you need less, you can walk it farther down towards your booty. If it's already strong, just stay here resting on your side. Otherwise, you can sweetly roll yourself onto your back. You're pinning your arm beneath you. If a leg wants to stay up to support you, it can. Or you can spread your legs down, put your other hand where it wants to go. And just rest here, fully let yourself begin to melt into the floor. And stay present to your breath as it moves, the beat of your heart as it thumps. Continue to breathe. There's a really sweet, subtle side of the yin yoga practice that is the energy. If you've had acupuncture before, then you're kind of aware of meridians. And it's kind of a similar concept here. 
In particular, this broken wing, as it nicely opens and stretches your shoulder and your arm, it is massaging the energy line of your heart. Our hearts is space energetically responsible for love, and that love starts at home, unconditional with the self. And that can be oftentimes the most challenging dimension of love, love of self. And so every time we journey into broken wing, we strengthen our ability to remove the energetic blockages that have prevented us from loving ourselves. And oftentimes it is giving up our power to other people and allowing them to hurt us and to just accept that and to take it and to diminish the light within ourselves. And so this pose is helping us to reopen that channel, to take back our life, to take back our self-love, to take back our power from the people who have hurt us and caused us pain, to forgive ourselves. Another breath in and out. To love ourselves again. Because we deserve it. Go slow. Roll back onto your right side. Free up your left arm and move it and do whatever makes sense. Roll to your back and just kind of spread out and pay attention to how you feel. So it's easy sometimes to feel the anatomical benefits. You can feel the release of a posture and kind of understand what it's doing. It's harder to feel the subtle energetic strengthening of self-love. So it will manifest as a sense of lightness in your being. So just resting on your back before we go over to get the other side, just noticing if you feel lighter at all. If there's a sense of just kind of floating and being here at peace. This is a strong indication that there's a little bit more self-love you got into. Roll onto your left side. We'll do it on the other side. You reach your right arm up. Let go of the desire to reach and just let it surrender, drop in. Spin your thumb towards your butt and then drop your arm behind you. Move it higher up, lower down, or stay right here on your side. Roll to your back if that's what would feel really good. Let your legs do what makes sense. Your other arm rests in a way that feels good. And just breathing and allowing some time here in Broken Wing on the other side. I'll join you on some of my favorites. So it's the way that we position our body that does, similar to what an acupuncture needle does, puts a kink, puts an on-purpose clamp on the line of energy. The meridian that's running into, in this case, running into the actual organ of the heart itself. So function of the system works stronger too. In addition to the function of the energetic qualities of the heart. So just tuning into what you feel moving and what you feel resting, what you feel from the inside out. Appreciating the subtlety of you, of this practice. How fulfilling it is to reclaim your life, to find your joy again, your love, your power. Whenever you feel ready, roll back to your left side. Oh yeah, free up your arm. Then roll to your back so that you can spend as much time as life's gonna allow you to take final rest. So just spread out in a way that feels good. Feel the floor fully embrace you and give back into it as you let go. 
So you can just spend as much time as you can. Definitely spend some time here so things can start to kind of come back together. Remember that you are the author of your story. And Buddha once said that no one can save us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. That it's our path and it's up to us to walk it. So I'll leave you here to rest and with deep love and respect for you. Namaste.